175. Just what are your thoughts? You know, the same as what I watched. It was uh, the start of the game, 11 of 12 at Arizona. Not going to be a successful journey. Uh, fought back. I felt like when we fought back and we cut it to 10, we still played fast like we were down, you know, where we got decent shots, but it could have been more, you know, controlled. Um, but, you know, they're a good team. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we can't have a start like that on the road. I think just, you know, overall thoughts on a road trip when you go one and one sort of Normally, that's a good thing. At this time, were you hoping for more? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, you want to you you play well. You want to put yourself in position to win. We put ourselves in position down 10 with seven minutes to go. Uh, in most of the games that we've had, we've been up. We've been you know, deep at the end with a you know, having a chance, and we haven't finished it. Um, but um, you know, I just want to play well. I didn't feel like we played well in that game. Are you thinking that? Um, uh, that your best game, or you, you know, have you played it yet? Or I don't think so. I feel like even like Arizona State, we were really good in the first half. In the second half, as you saw, it was kind of like you know, you know, playing on your heels. And I feel like in the first half of Arizona, we were not there, and then we fought back them. There were some really good moments. I mean, we we held them a really good offensive team. There was literally, I think it was one for twelve. There was twelve possessions in the second half. There were six when we cut it to 10 that we got stops in six straight possessions. That's hard to do. And so there was a lot of positives more in the second half than there was in the first half, especially on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we just got to put two halves together. You know, we haven't seen that yet. Pop, I'm curious about uh, your take on the national court storming discussion that has yeah. come back up and is always popping back up. What are you, what's your thoughts on court storming? Is that something you you know what? It's a great question. Uh, I've been a part of a, a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, one that was was uh, it looked like the players were going to start fighting, and the, you know it was it was, and it was where the game they thought it was over. They rushed the floor, and they still had to go to the monitor because it was at the end, and had to get everybody back off. Uh, so it was one one of those. And I, you know, I think uh, as a fan. Um, or as a coach and you're trying to get your program, like when we, we, we beat the Zags and they, they rush the floor, it's always, I always feel like it's one of those memorable moments as a student that you go. Obviously, the safety of everybody is the most important part. Uh, I saw the Caitlin Clark deal, and I've never seen anything like that. I mean, it was blindside, and that was scary, like really scary. Um, at, uh, when I was at Syracuse, the one thing I thought that they did a great job of is there was security around with a rope. And then when everybody kind of, the game was over and they were in line shaking hands, then it, they let them on the floor. So I don't know what the right you know thing is. Obviously, the most important thing is the safety and uh, seeing Filipowski get hit, uh, seeing Kegel Clark. I mean, it was like almost like when you watch the running of the Bulls. You know, they're coming out of there like, like sprinting rather than just a, an array to, to show the camaraderie and maybe after a football game and they're around in the middle, you know, everybody's hugging each other and excited. I mean, they're coming out there like, I don't know why there's a sprint. Like, I don't know why the student, I, again, there's like a, when you see the running of the Bulls, if you ever watch a documentary, you're like seeing that happen. And so um, I don't know what the right answer, but the most important thing is the safety of the student athletes. I, th I know in our Gonzaga game when we we had it, you know they're hugging our players and our players are you know there's this there's this elation and joy that's you know, probably you know you have it once or twice or maybe three times in your career and you want that moment but you definitely don't want what happened to to Caitlin Clark and and Filipowski so um, I know I didn't give you an answer that was kind of like a, I hedged my bet I, I was a hedge fund manager right there but. You know, I've been on both sides of it as, as gosh, that was just such a great moment. You know, maybe, you know, how, you, how can you control it by still giving them that uh, where the players are going to be safe? Um, we had an issue at Syracuse, too, where people were stealing computers and the, the media thing is on there. And, you know, so you've, you've seen, I've seen control and I've seen chaos, um, and you definitely do not want chaos. Lately, and then eventually slipped away, and you end up with the loss. What can you 
say about your team's resilience and the mentality in which you did have a sizable lead at Arizona State slip away, but yep. you still had to hold on for that win. Yeah, you know what I think listen, you gotta have you gotta have success in those situations. And literally that was the worst situation that we've been in all year. And then we found a way to win. We got a stop. Uh, Braxton made two foul shots. It's hard to do when you just miss two one and ones. You know, we missed some foul shots, turned it over, the press, the crowd, the and uh, you know, usually on the road, that's a hard thing to do. I was really proud of our guys. I wasn't happy with the performance in the second half. I was really proud of the resiliency and you know, the fight and the character. Now, was it perfect? No. Did we find a way to win? Yes. And that's what you need. You need to see the result. I mean, there's so many bounces of the ball, a call, a bounce, a made shot, a missed shot, a bank shot, uh, uh, and we found a way. So that was, I was really proud of our guys. In the, the past two weeks, four games, what's gotten into KJ? Um, what sort of jumps up? Just, you know, uh, he's in there working with Coach Conroy. He's getting his work in. Uh, you know, the day that he shot well, he was, you know, I think uh, Coach Conroy made him shoot, you know, make 50 from five different spots on the floor. And, you know, with his shoulder, it's not the easiest thing to get him to do it. And, but he got the work in, he did it, and had that success. And um, you just got, you got to keep working. His greatest asset is he has entirely complete belief in himself. And I love that about him. Now, again, shot selection sometimes, some of the defensive stuff, but he is, I think he's got special ability, like he got great instincts. You know, just in these past four games, he's averaging 20 points, but it felt like at times that you kind of like even more than that, like the playmaking is? At the end, I, I, you know what, we're trying to give teams also different looks, you know, and so him maybe in the, on the ball screen in the middle uh, compared to Savir sometimes gives you a different look. Uh, they're not ready for it. Um, I think with you know certain teams, the way that they're defending us, it's opening up opportunities for others. You know, when you have a guy like Keon Brooks, Arizona was completely denying him, did not want him to get the ball. Uh, that opens up other opportunities, and you need those other guys to you know other players to step up and make plays. Uh, you know, you look at Washington State. Jalen Wells has done that for him. He was a guy who was you know not playing a lot, and he's starting to get hot, and then they go on their run. I think. You know, having a guy like Corin who plays starter minutes, I mean, he's as good as any starter in our league, um, um, you know, where he's really stepping up and you've got that burst off the bench is huge. Um, he's confident. Um, and when he's shooting the ball well, he's a really tough guard. He can make others better, too. He's had multiple games where he's had five assists, no turnovers. Um, now it just goes back to the consistency. But, uh, you know, he's had some big games for us, for sure. And uh, we talked a bit uh, last week about Nate and just, you know, the things that you've seen from him this year. Just um, obviously he's kind of been in spurts in and out of the lineup. Just what, what, what do you think of the season so far? You know, it's first time. You know, sometimes you've got to say, okay, these are the eight guys I'm going to play. You got to make them some tough decisions. That's uh, it's not always the, the favorite of, of everybody because we have a very deep team, uh, you know, really good players. And it's, you know, I, I don't play 10. That's just not what I do. Um, um, I don't believe that's the best uh, recipe for success. But he's been very good. He, he went through a tough time where it's, you know, when you're not playing, it's tough. Um, but that's why, you know, your coaching staff keeps working with him, keep getting him better, keep him focused. Um, and, and you know what? It's good to go through tough times, too. You learn a lot more. Uh, you become more resilient. Um, and I think he's grown from that. And I'm really proud of him. It's a hard thing to do. And he came in, and uh, I remember the at Utah game, he came in and, and just changed the, the scope of the game. I mean, we ended up not winning the game, but he came in and gave us a, score, you know, a scoring punch, shot in the arm. And he did that at Arizona. And, uh, you know, he just needs to keep working on the defensive end and uh, keep competing on that end. That's the big. That was my biggest concern. Offense hasn't been our issue this year. It's been on the defensive end, and it's not that he's a bad defensive player, but we've got players that defend better. Um, but but there's always that game where they're playing a certain way, and this we're not. And we, you need that, and he's come out and, and produced for us for sure. Is he stout enough on the, the defensive end? I know at ASU they really went after him. Like 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 they target him. Yeah. And, and they try to find him. What things can he do? 
because he can't get bigger. Right? Yeah, you know what? He's got. You know what he has? He has really good basketball instincts. Like it's not how fast. You know, it's anticipation is a is a is an athlete is, is a form of athleticism, and I think he's got really good feel there. So obviously he can get stronger. Those types of things. It's also it's not just necessarily one on one. There's defensive schemes that you got to be able to uh, to do help side team defense, being in the right spots. Uh, rebounding the basketball, which has been a big, you know, key for us, um, and so you know, it's something. You know, there's always room for improvement, and uh, he's not bad in those things. But areas that he needs to improve to give me a, to have a better look at him to to impact winning for us. Yeah, is he better in the zone? Then? He's pretty good in the zone. Um, we, you know what, and Percy, we haven't really worked on the zone. I mean. We're out there. We're doing it to kind of throw a curveball and throw an off-speed pitch. We've invested in the man, and that's what we're going to do. I really believe that you can't just keep, like, if you're going to do it, do it. And we're in our first year of it. Uh, there's been some growing pains. We've changed ball screen coverage. We lost Frank, who was the centerpiece of that. Uh, Wesley Yates, who's another physical defensive player. We didn't have him. And we've had to adapt on our ball screen coverage. And I think Braxton lately has been way, way better in terms of what we're doing. I think our scheme's been better. Um, our rebounding's been better. And, and you got to just keep growing. But you can't always just turn the page and say, OK, we're going to start doing more of this. We still we st work on a little bit, but we're, we are who we are in that regard. And how can we make it better? You mentioned the rebounding's been better, Braxton's been better. Why is he so effective on the glass? Yeah, he, you know what? He if he has a special gift to rebound. I mean, I uh, we were in Europe, and uh, uh, Moses Woods' his father was there, and he's, Moses his father played in the NBA. I think he played ten years in the NBA. And after one of the games, he said to me, "He's like, Moo, Braxton's got a gift. Like he can just, you know, guys can go get it with his elbows above the rim. He's got good timing. He's strong. He's physical. He's athletic. You know, he might not be the box out guy, but boy, he can go. He can just go get it." And I just love, you know, you know, people aren't talking about this, but Braxton has been, he's, you know, he's sprained his ankle it's earlier in the year. It's swells. He's tough. He's tough. Like he, he's playing through some stuff. Um, and uh, I, I give him a lot of respect for that. He's doing it for his team. Uh, the zone is obviously was more natural for him. It helped him be an all defensive player. Uh, you, we can keep him around the basket. He doesn't have to go out and guard on the perimeter. Um, but you know his rim protection and then ability to rebound has been a huge. You know, I think why our numbers, you know, not in the Arizona game necessarily, but in our good defensive games, that's where you know that's what he's been good at. Uh, a quick scouting report on UCLA. You already played him once. Well, yeah, we played him once. Uh, you know, Bona is, you know, he hurt us in the first matchup. And also in the first matchup, you know, we had 19 turnovers. Uh, we, we had a turnover on, you know, 25% of our possessions. So every four, it was like, here, here's the ball. And so I think, you know, sometimes, you know, UCLA is so well coached and such a good defensive team that their best offense sometimes is their defense. And so we've got to be, we've got to be, we got to have one of our better non-turnover games. We got to move the ball better side to side. Um, uh, but Bona on the offensive end is elite. And everybody's talking about what well, they don't shoot the ball well. Like they, they're, Stevanovic, we played him when he was at Utah. He can shoot. You know, it's, you can't look at the numbers and say, oh, he can't shoot. He, he can shoot. They've got skilled players. They've got a great center. They've got a coach who is tough and they're going to be ready to, you know, you know, come out and fight, and uh, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, we've we're one and nine against them since we've been here, like, or we've lost nine straight, like, are you, like our guys, like they're a good team. We, we you know, we got to be tougher. You know, we've got to be able to go and compete and keep them off the glass and not turn it over and and those types of things. And you know, we've, you know. We're excited about the opportunity, I can tell you that. Hey, um, after that game on Saturday, did you think uh, that that might be one of your last times of playing Arizona? And, uh, you know, I, I haven't been as nostalgic on that, like that, like so far. It's, it's probably one of those things at the end of the year you'll probably say, 
man, that was, you know, playing there. That you know, We've had so many great moments there, you know, had some wins. And, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't have that. Um, you know, obviously great program, all that stuff, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel that at the end. I was thinking, how do we win the next one? How do we get better? You know, let's get ready to, to protect home court. That's the one thing that we've, you know, we've stumbled a couple times where the close ones, like we got to get those ones. Um, and uh, some that have slipped through your, your fingers. And so, you know, how do, we, how do we win? How do we win this next one? So, um, you know, but I'm sure at the end of the year, you'll sit there and go, man, the Pac-12, it's gone. What do you mean? You know, like, oh. Then to like that right there, like you probably just say answer this question, but you know, does this march toward the end of the season feel like the other ones? I mean, like, again, from the outside looking in, it just feels so different, you know, in, in just in terms of the conference. Uh, for you guys internally, does it feel different? No, um, the one thing that it feels different, and I, I, I really believe this, and this is where the national recognition of our league, it bothers me a little bit because I think this year, top to bottom is the, the most parity and most competitive that the league has been in my seven years. Um, like real, real good teams, um, really good talent teams, players. And so, um, you know, the team like, you know, UCLA, you know, struggling early and then win six in a row. I mean, that's when, when Mick in his first year, that's what they did. And I think they went to the final four. Well, I forget what they went, but he's a great coach and always gets his teams playing. And, you know, but how they performed early, you know, they're, they're as good as anybody. They beat anybody on any, any given night. You know, USC almost beat Oklahoma. They, uh, uh, their non-conference, they were really good. You know, they they can beat anybody. They got as much talent as anybody in the league. You know, it just goes back to does it gel? But it will gel at some point, you know, and that's they're dangerous. Uh, but look at Washington State. Look what they've done. Um, Cal. Uh, you know, Oregon State goes down and beats Stanford at Stanford. You know, Oregon State beats Arizona at Arizona. I mean, come on. This league is it's for a fan, as a college basketball fan, it's been one of the best leagues top to bottom. I know in my seven years, for sure. So then, does it hurt you then when, like, the bracketology says that this conference is only going to get two bits? Yeah, I, I do. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. I know Colorado and Utah. I know us. I mean, we've, you know, the teams that are in and four seeds. <laughs> and yeah, we were right there. Uh, one of them, we had a foul shot to walk off and say, you know, have a, you know like, you know, but we didn't. But you know, we play with anybody. There's 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 fine margins uh, this year in college basketball, and uh, um, you know, you know Dana Altman's teams. I mean, I, I got a lot. I got a lot of respect for this league, and I don't think nationally it gets that respect. You're looking ahead to USC. They're leading Pac-12 in block shots per game. How do you get open and uncontested looks? It's it's you know. All these games, you know, Bone is as good as a shot blocker. Um, just Balo was rim protecting uh, as good as anybody. They all pose a problem. Uh, you know, USC has uh, Vincent and uh, Morgan who are really good shot blockers. They got good length, good size. Uh, you know, we've you know, got to force those guys on the perimeter somehow, some way, and uh, keep them away from the basket because if they can stay there, they're really good. Really good shot blockers, all three of those teams that I mentioned. One of the reasons why they're all really talented and good.